seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It was a small step for space exploration, but a giant leap for Australia's budding space industry. It was a, a lot of build up getting to that launch. We've been working on that mission for a number of years. People were kind of on the edge of their seats. And when it finally went off, yeah, there was a lot of excitement in the room. A week ago, the first of three rockets launched from a remote town in the Northern Territory in a collaboration between NASA and a local company. Our first mission is called XQC, and they're actually looking at X-ray emissions from a galactic phenomenon. The other missions are looking at UV emissions from Centauri A and B, which are two celestial targets that they want to gather data on. It's NASA's first rocket launch from a commercial spaceport outside the US. The scientists have actually expended the celestial targets they're able to look at from the Northern Hemisphere. And so they're very interested in to find launch locations that are in the Southern Hemisphere. And Australia happens to offer a friendly government uh, and a place where we can go and launch. Interrogate DPN 66 transponders. Transponders A and B, correct? Roger. Australia has a broad uh, history and a long history in space. Uh, we were there at the start of the space age. In the 1960s, Australia played a critical role in space exploration, with the launch of a rocket in the South Australian outback, and then the transmission of man's first step on the moon from the Parkes telescope. But in the decades since, there's been a long lull. Space enthusiasts hope that's set to change with this month's rocket launches in the top end. Australia is definitely back in the space race and we've got a sector that's growing from strength to strength. What had been the preserve of the world's major superpowers was now transitioning uh, to commercial entities. Enrico Palermo heads up Australia's four-year-old National Space Agency. He sees huge potential for the industry, for commercial opportunities and beyond. We can manage uh, disaster response uh, and, and clearly you know, we've had challenges as a nation with, with floods and, and, and bushfire in recent years. Uh, but also monitor the climate. Uh, what we know about our planet and, and how it's changing, much of that information actually comes from satellite data. Well, we started back in 2015. We take satellites up into space. A good way to think of us is like a bus to space. Space exploration is now dominated by private companies and startups. Major players like Elon Musk's SpaceX and Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic leading the way. In the past, the space agencies tried to do everything themselves and build the launch vehicles and the satellites themselves. And now they've realized it's much quicker and easier and cheaper to go to private industry and say, please build me a rocket or please take a satellite that I have to space. And that's really driving the commercial market. Gilmore is one Australian space company entering the fray with its rocket factory on the Gold Coast. Its founder and CEO, Adam Gilmore, is a former banker and self-taught engineer, a self-described space nerd. I was actually a banker for 20 years at Citibank, but I always loved space. I think the destiny of humans is to live and work in, in space. And, you know, one day we'll go to space the same as we just get on a jet plane and go to another, to another continent. He sees great potential for the industry in Australia. I think most people don't realise how much everybody uses space technology every day, whether it's Google Maps, Uber, autonomous vehicles, a lot of the farms use satellite data to determine if their crops are safe. In my perspective, we haven't grabbed the full opportunity uh, that we have. If you look overseas at other countries that have um, very vibrant, uh, large space economies, it's clear that government has played a very important role in, in stimulating uh, the growth of that sector. Equatorial Launch Australia and NASA uh, go for launch. In a statement, a government spokesperson said it had invested over $15 million into 43 companies over the past year and was streamlining regulations. 
After tonight's rocket launch, NASA has one more rocket to go in the coming weeks, but they're already planning their next visit. The concept of coming to Australia to do this research, we've really been pushing for that for almost 15, 20 years. So yeah, I think there's a pretty high chance we'll be back in the next three to five year time frame.